Wait, Cole. <laughs> All right, going in for your last haircut. Yes. <laughs> Save so shaving it off. Exactly. You're done. Yeah. Like both of my parents, they were just quite. Yeah, they were expecting it, so go for it. <laughs> And your brother? Yeah, well, that was, that's a different story. Um, I think it was quite... So it took a while, because I have four brothers. Yeah. And I wanted to see them one-on-one -on -one and talk with them. And I had the whole evening to just talk about it. And, um, yeah, I think it was... I think my brothers are the most important, the most influential people for me. Um, it, whenever I would meet a girl and uh, there was like a check, I would take her to, to my brothers just to see what they think. <laughs> their approval. Yes, for their approval. And um, yeah, so um, I really want them. Of obviously, texted my decision, and uh, but at the same time, they had quite different beliefs. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that was challenging, right? Because. And luckily enough, they all said that you know they love me and they want the best for me, and then they they cannot argue with experience that I fit, right? But they don't understand it on a faith level, right? They they not do not necessarily believe in God or just they believe in God in their own way, uh, which is challenging, right? And also, right, the history of the legion yeah. it doesn't help too. Um, but uh, yeah, I <laughs> I did a lot of thinking just to prepare myself for those conversations and explain the best why I decided to go for candidacy and what I'm feeling and yeah and it it actually it was actually surprisingly well it was surprisingly well um, though obviously they still probably need to process the whole decision and. Uh, Realize that I'm just not in the morning's Poland, right? It's just, uh, I feel at least no one's have said it, but how I feel is that they, they might think that they lost a brother. Yeah. And yeah, because if if I decide to stay, decide to be here for a little longer, I won't see them for a few years, maybe, right? So. I don't know where's the first home visit, but if that's yeah. uh, well, that's the most common thought because it's true. They physically lost a brother. Yeah, they're just not physically there anymore. But I'm really grateful because the last few few months, wherein I knew that I'm leaving, and also since I came back from mission here, I did a much more to just uh, be closer to them and try to build relationships and uh, get to know them better. Because that was the something I realized on the first trip that yeah we actually are not that close together and um, I trust them and they're and they are super important for me and I love them a lot but just we could work on our fa family dynamic right so I've been trying to change that so that's what I'm super grateful for that I had this year just to try to I don't know make our relationship better and. So why did you, how did your discernment journey happen? Yes. What brings you here to sit on this chair and get your head shaved yes, here? Yes, right. The worst part. Um, I think it's a, there's few things, right, obviously. And first thing is that since I was 15, I've always been doing missions, like Holy Week missions of Freeman Christie or or summer missions, and that was always the place where I feel, feel the most connected to God, also like the, the happiest, the most joyful, satisfied. And we would, as a missionaries, we would experience a lot of suffering, right? Su suffering that we ourselves are not able to imagine what those people were going through. Um, but somehow, you just, somehow you just, like live and love and 
that's a beautiful feeling of just loving people, you know. And um, so, for I think at least uh, since I started, I feel called to some kind of mission, and I knew that, that I want to connect my life with. with <laughs> Would you do that? And also the camera is <laughs> no, you won't. This is <laughs> This is the all American cut. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm getting rid of that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the mission was something that I always felt called to, just didn't know in what way, right? And then I have left for mission year, which was time of a lot of different graces, realizations, and um, throughout my mission year, I think the big deal, I mean, there was lots of jokes, right? There was lots of comments, yeah. or just people don't know what who a missionary actually is, right? So, about joining seminary also f with legionaries community, um, so obviously the thought sh like pops up, and um, you have to deal with it, right? And my way was to just ignore it and just block it and do not allow it and do it. everything I can to be, to, you know, to get go in a different direction. And um, yeah, I guess everything changed when I actually came here for spiritual exercises. Mm -hmm. And I've had uh, just one conversation, but a very important one with Farbayeras. Mm -hmm. Uh, where he he just helped me to acknowledge or just accept that I might have a different vocation, right? And if if I have different vocation, I'll at some point know. So I don't need to rush it. I don't need to <coughs> you know join join candidacy right after mission year, or I don't need to. Mm, yeah, just I can wait. I can finish college. I can. God will let me know, right? Yeah. And I think it's always also a quite important part of my life is that there were moments in my life where I just exactly knew what I have to do. Um, and that was, mission year was one of them, and I believe candidacy is one of them too. And um, uh, also there were a few new things I discovered by living with priests, right? And some new lessons about how can you actually love people in different ways. Um, I think the mission year was a very powerful experience that allowed me to see, okay, that how to love God better, how to love others better, but also I think something with that many young people are struggling with is just how to love yourself better. Hmm. How did you pick that up? I think through the experiences, just seeing how different people would treat me and um, and sometimes, yeah, even when we arrived, we haven't started doing anything yet, but people loved us, just loved us in so many ways by giving us gifts, just showing up, uh, supporting us, praying for us. Um, so I think that was... Uh, Something new, you know, or just, or something that I have not realized before. Um, you probably had to, you were probably thinking, I had to do something to be received by them, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, one more what time do we end? Uh, 12.35. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How's it look, Luke? Brother Luke? Yeah, I need, I'm, I'm still working change, on it. Right? <laughs> it's, be, it's better than what it was. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it needs to be here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, and one of them that struck me the most is about the, I guess as a missionary, so we had the dating fast, right? And obviously there are some close friendships or, I don't know, relationships that could have been, went into that direction if not for the dating fast, right? Yeah. And um, something I discovered, and that was a very powerful experience, is that when you're, when you are not, bounded or you just you don't have to to the one person right you're allowing yourself to just be whoever for whoever is in front of you and love them fully and that was a really powerful experience exactly um that 
changed a lot in my life and um, answered a few questions that I've had regarding, for example, celibacy. Um, and uh, yeah, then I came back, right? And got, coming back to Poland, I gave myself a year, which I feel is like kind of stupid because it's just a year, so you won't get to do really anything. But anyway, that was the deal I made. Um, and I came back and I wanted to try out college. I studied geography and spatial management, which were amazing studies, super interesting. Mm, and just to you know, date, have a social life and try to see how, how I'll fit in, you know, after, after being a missionary for one year. And honestly, there were, there were many beautiful moments and awesome memories. I got to be with my close friends again to uh, date some girls too and, and everything was great but not satisfying, not fulfilling. Yeah. It, it was a weird, it's like, I just... I'm happy but there's more. Yeah, I'm happy there's more and the closer I would get to, you know, there was half a year, I kind of forgot about the whole one year deal. <laughs> of course. And, um, and then someone at February, I started having this memory in my mind um, that until now actually I cannot get rid of. Is the memory from Kazakhstan, that's where I did missions as a mm -hmm. 15 or 16 year old. And uh, just standing in the middle of the prairie and uh, yeah, and looking in every single direction, and seeing nothing. Like just grass until the horizon, and feeling the strong wind, and um, and this hot, very dry sun, that just I don't know. It's, it was a weird, um, yeah. And I started like thinking about it. Why? Why I just cannot stop to think about it, right? And um, I've. After breaking down, I have three ideas. The first one is that as a that's the feeling of living the mission, right? That's the, something I talked about at the beginning, and um, just it's the most beautiful thing when you actually you're at the mission, and then you kind of it becomes your reality. Like you you have few days to or a few weeks to just get used to it, and then you just live their life, and it's beautiful. It's exciting and it's and it's your life and uh, second thing is the idea of the idea of being put across something much more powerful in this case it was in nature but I believe it was the God's expression right through nature and um, if and just the the sense of mortality and being so small um, but in a good way, right? Because you're, you're seeing that, okay, wow, that I'm just this tiny on this huge prairie that just goes on forever. And it's beautiful. It's, it's a amazing force that I'm just, uh, so much smaller than the force, right? So if I have such a, you know, small life and it's not actually that meaningful, there's something much more powerful that um, I can do something meaningful with it, right? And just try to do my best and 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 be and be enjoy for for the beauty and power, right? The, of God, God, right? Yeah. And the third point is, I knew that I've been struggling with with the decision, right? Because I knew that I mean, one year is slowly finishing, but. Um, that I have made a deal and well I could have stayed for longer but I don't find it that satisfying or just it just feels in a way empty it's weird because I love the Krakow and I love my my hometown and, and my family obviously and my friends but in the end it didn't really feel like home um, I know the exact same feeling yeah and um I figured that it also means that um, 
at least when we were in, when we were in Kazakhstan, um, we would have to trust our bus driver that he has an idea where he's going, because all you can see is grass until the horizon, and there's no reference point, right? And um, I've decided to just you know trust my bus driver and go until the horizon. I hope that that's where he wants me, right? So yeah, that's that's like the main the main story. How's it been so far coming here? Uh, Only well, day one. Yeah, they one they already taken off <laughs> half his head. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's okay. There's a line. There's more. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's it's been actually quite challenging, but it was just because of the mix of emotions. Yeah. Uh, I felt. I thought. Yeah. I thought that leaving Poland is the hardest part, but no. Because it all builds up, right? You first leave Poland. I mean, first leave your family, your friends in Poland. And then you come here, and then you meet with everyone you love in here. And then they're driving you away to, to this tiny town. And and then it all builds up to just actually uh, leave, right? Or And um, I think that was tough. And honestly... Just a little heartbreaks you get when, when you realize that okay, yeah, like like right now I'm losing my hair and I love I have a long <laughs> hair, or I had like my closet at, at home I have like thirty dress shirts, and right now I'll be just you get to have five, yeah, the exact same one, but you get to have five <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, and actually it's I think it's awesome. You don't, you don't really have to think about what you're gonna wear. You just have to think about the clean one. That's all. Yeah. Which one do I take right now? The clean one. <laughs> yeah. That's it. But uh, at the same time, it was you know a way of, to express myself and to what I and what which I really enjoy. Um, so those things build up too. But at the same time, it's I think it's consoling first to uh, when I came back here, everything just seemed normal, and um, yeah, just like it was not nothing that would shock me, right? I, I got to the cubicle and it's like I've been here, I know how to surviving cubicle it's <laughs> or or like i've been i don't know like everything smells familiar and just the right place you know and also just having a friends over uh my ex for mayor right and probably narina too are you my for mayor in it <laughs> yes okay yes so all your faces as well. other faces having one of my best friends to join candidacy with me, which actually I find quite distracting. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> no, I went with my brother. Let's, let's, oh, you did? I went with a very good friend and my brother, <laughs> and we would just like do jokes on each other the whole time. Yes. <laughs> I'm not, not going to tell you what we did, but it was just like, it was so much fun. What are you doing? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so, and also I had great family to get me through the process of change. Yeah. Uh, something almost done. I think they were, I don't know, just the, it's even how hard, hard to explain how, how much I love them and how much I owe them for what they did, but by just loving them, right? In their own way. In the weirdest way, the gesture of leaving is an act of love. Yes. Yes, I was waiting for them to leave for so long. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because it's it's hard when you see them every day on the on the hallways. I would just I want to have this moment of just saying goodbye and and just and then, get it over with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but I was talking about your gesture to your love for your family. Yeah, it's yeah, like right. yours, yours, you're saying goodbye to them and walking away is like this is the best thing I could do for both you and me. I guess so. Right. I, I mean, well, I just had to have really tough goodbyes. I spent a month in Montana with 60 students where you just fall in love with them. Yeah. You know their stories and it's that goodbye was gruesome, but I couldn't even like, I couldn't show them I was sad because they were already sad. And so yes. I was like, you know, <laughs> kind of just get out of here. But, uh, but I really like that's like one of the best gestures of love because that I do God's will for you, for your sake. 
Yeah. Just learning to not be attached right? or in a different way. That's what you don't realize. And you'll, you'll see more and more when you guys enter poverty, chastity, and obedience. If they think chastity is the toughest one, but it's not. And, and what they think of chastity is actually harder because they think it's just no sex. It's actually not. It's even saying no to good, healthy relationships yeah. for something higher, for, for your calling. And so it's saying no to that. But the hardest one is actually surrendering even your free will. Hmm. Yeah. Well. <laughs> you look fresh. Yeah. I don't want to brag, but it does look good. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then ever, nobody in the seat ever is like, no, 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 you're being so proud. Everybody in the seat likes that comment. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but you always know my approach. What is that? This kind of haircut, but uh, I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you. My hair was not this way when I entered either. Yeah. At least you have hair. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, but I'm gonna be a legion in this first of all. <laughs> Depends on your holiness. Yes. And so, the amount of gel you put every day. I'm still working on it, so that's why I still have a lot of hair. Wait till I get holy, then I'll start losing it all. No, but I'm, I'm, I have a good, you know, start to to lose it all. Yeah. I I don't know when my dad was bald, but I think it was actually quite early. So, it was like thirties. Alright. start balding. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Alright. Let me take that off of you here.